you know, obviously serving as president is an extremely important role and an influential one. So what would you hope to accomplish as the SBC president? Well, from the beginning, there's been four things that I feel like God really put on my heart. Um, one is a continued reawakening of um, just the Southern Baptist Convention to the gospel. Mm -hmm. That needs to happen in every generation. And that's what revival is, is reawakening to the beauties of the gospel, being driven by the gospel, being renewed in our commitment to the, to the Great Commission. Um, a, a second thing um, is uh, really bringing um, a lot of churches that are sitting on the sidelines, yeah. whether they're younger churches or smaller churches, um, that, you know, they, they're part of the SBC, but they're not really engaging either financially or they're not really active in the ministries, mm -hmm. you know, bringing them, them into it. You know, a part of that second thing to me also is, is seeing the convention um, expand and adapt to some of the new things that God is doing in the churches. I mean, the, the heart of the SBC is cooperative missions and cooperative giving. Yeah. But, you know, that, that, that has begun to take some different forms in, uh, you know, in, in this generation and saying, Man, we just need to see um, the, the Spirit of God lead Southern Baptist churches to cooperate together. And, and what does it look like going forward? Um, a third thing has been um, that we engage our culture with grace and truth. I mean, we live in a, in a very different time. Um, and our culture, I mean, nobody needs to really hear this, but our culture is growing increasingly hostile to what we believe. And I think it's important not only that we hold the, the truth of Christ, but we do it with the Spirit of Christ. So, you know, we speak with grace and truth and, and not just truth or, or not just grace. I think Russell Moore is doing a fantastic job in leading us in yeah. this, but you know, just you want to see that pervade the convention. A fourth thing uh, was just seeing the, um, uh, the promotion, the elevation of diverse leadership within the SBC. Yeah. I mean, one in every five SBC churches now is, um, is non-Anglo. Our leadership needs to reflect that because the United States is rapidly changing and uh, our, our, um, our makeup as Southern Baptist needs to as well. Yeah, that's great. Well, how have you seen diversity increased at the Summit Church? Um, it's not been uh, super easy. You don't just wave a wand. Uh, it's probably about five years ago that we just made a decision as a church that to be faithful to what the, the Bible was teaching, we needed, we needed to reflect the diversity of our community and we needed to demonstrate the, the, the future diversity of the kingdom, you know, what it's gonna look like. And so um, for us, that's been uh, a lot of uh, intentionality in relationships. We say you, you don't just wanna host multicultural events on the weekend, you want to live multicultural lives. It's meant that we have prioritized the, um, both the development and the, uh, the placement of uh, leadership uh, within our church, whether it's on the lay level or the staff level. Uh, what's happened is incrementally every year, we've just seen the number of brothers and sisters, whether they're African-American or Hispanic or Asian, um, that have just begun to, to, to not only come into our church body, but be, you know, you can look at, at uh, just who is our, on our staff. I mean, over half of our, not over half, half of our campus pastors right now um, are non-Anglo. Right. And um, uh, the majority of our worship staff is not Anglo. And that is, it's, it's, it's intentionality that, that ultimately makes that happen. I think it'll, it'll be that way in, in the SBC as a whole. It just takes, not, not events, not a show, mm -hmm. but um, it, the intentional development of relationships, multicultural lives that lead to a multicultural display.